Good morning, good morning. Just wanted to come on and share a little message with you this morning. I was just thinking about when we get up in the morning and just all the different things we do to prepare ourselves for the day. And one of the things we do is we get a, a wash or a shower or a bath to wake ourselves up, to freshen ourselves up. And another thing we do is we normally have something to eat which helps us, you know, physically to give us, give us strength. And we, we just need to prepare ourselves because sometimes a day can be quite gruelling, it can be very tiring, it can be very demanding, or it might just be a very relaxing day, I don't know. But we need to prepare ourselves. And I don't, I don't just feel we need to prepare ourselves physically, but we just need to prepare ourselves mentally, emotionally, and we need to prepare ourselves spiritually as well. And one of the ways we can do that is just focusing on the Word of God, focusing on the truth. And, and you don't need to take medicine when you uh, read God's Word. It, it just speaks to us and it gives us that spiritual strength, that spiritual oomph to keep going for the day. So I'm just going to um, read to you a psalm this morning that um, was spoke to my heart and I just thought I should share it with you today. And then I'll just um, talk a little bit about what I, you know, what I felt was on my heart from it. It's that lovely psalm in Psalm 103 where it says, Praise the Lord my soul. All my inner, innermost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is, the, as is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flare of the field. The wind blows over it and it's gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with, with their children's children. With those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Wow, wow, wow. Such an amazing psalm, isn't it, that one? Well, I say that about a lot of, a lot of the psalms, but again, it's just that... And that focusing in, um, not just this morning, but every day, focusing in and glorifying God and the importance of praise, the importance of praising God and the importance of blessing him because it's so easy not to want to do those things or to feel drawn away from them, but to take the time to bless God and to glorify him. And I suppose really as I was looking at this psalm in the early part of it, it's not, it's not forgetting all the Lord has done because the Lord has done so many things. We can easily focus on uh, the things that are disgruntling us in life and the things that aren't being done or the things that we would like changed and our focus can get so caught up in all those things but at the beginning of this psalm it's talking about not forgetting all, he, all that he has done and that he's a God that forgives us it's a wonderful thing to know that we're forgiven and some of the things that have happened in our lives and that we, we've gone through it's wonderful to know that our God forgives us and he's promised us healing he's promised us health um, and God heals in many different ways. It's not always in the ways that we expect or imagine. God heals in many ways. And we just need to be thankful and um, just keep our hearts open for the way the Lord wants to heal us. And he's redeemed us. What about redemption? An action of, of being saved or being, you know, being saved from sin. And it was, it's God's plan for the redemption of the world that the Lord redeems us, that he saved us from sin. Isn't that a wonderful thing? You know, if somebody's drowning in the water, you want to try and save them. And the Lord has saved us from our sin. And, and preservation is talking about our lives being preserved. You know, to, to preserve something, to save something, something, it's ongoing. It's ongoing what the Lord has done and our relationship with him. 
and he crowns our, li our lives with love and mercy. He's a, he's a God that's full of love. And that's why Jesus died on the cross. It was out of his love for us that he died and he rose again. And, and it's to do with his mercy and his forgiveness, as I've already said. And the Lord wants our lives to know that satisfaction. As we come down to verse 5, that's what it's talking about. And that isn't just um, eating lots of food or eating food, but it's talking about being satisfied in, in our relationship with God, in our walk with God. And if we put other things before God and other things get in the way, it, it will affect that satisfaction. God will provide all that we all that we need, not what we want, but all that we need he will provide. It's talking about that unfading life. Our life will go on. He's promised us that we'll have eternal life. And in verse 6, it's talking about... Um, <clears throat> divine justice for the oppressed so it's so important for us as christians to pray and to try and act where we can if we know that there's oppression and injustice because righteousness and justice are the foundation of god's throne and we as christians need to be a voice for these people and for the, the, every situation and, and circumstance we can in whatever nation it is whatever part of the nation it is we need to, to be that and god's all, god's promised his mercy i've already touched on this and his unmerited favour, unmerited favour, God's grace and mercy, which is given without merit or deserving. The word of grace appears 170 times in the New Testament. We didn't deserve what God's done, what the Lord's done, but we've still got it. We've still been blessed with it and we are thankful. And focus on, on his promises. His promises are so much more important than what what circumstances or what emotions tell us because it's circumstances and emotions will change but our relationship and the promises of God won't ever change that he wants us to be obedient he wants us to be people that fear him and I'm not talking about being afraid in that but fearing God is is being in reverence and awe of him and and worshiping him and just just have that fear of, of, of who, you know of how much we love him that in fear of and reverence and awe of him God pardons our sins. He, he promises our sins are forgiven. Again, it reiterates that again. It tells us that again. And in verse 13, it talks about his divine sympathy and comfort. God is a sympathetic God. And he, he, he is able to empathise with our weaknesses. It says that in Hebrews. And he wants to bring comfort to us. And, and God's knowledge is, is amazing. In verse 4, it talks about God's knowledge and our frailty. He knows that we're frail. He knows that we're... We're just man. He knows that and, he, and he, he cares about us and he loves us and he wants to help us in every way that we open up our hearts and ask him for help for. And that we are like we are like grass. Our life is just brief. We haven't got lots and lots of years, but let's make the most of, of the lives God's given us. And let's just keep praising him and thanking him, even if we are in difficult situations at situations. And now it isn't going according to plan. God, God hasn't changed. He sees the bigger picture. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. And also, you know, if, if, if we are walking with Jesus, we, we know that immovability, we're not going to be moved. We're standing on the rock. He's the rock. He's the rock. And he's a righteous God. We can talk, see this in verse 17. In verse 18, it talks about keeping the law. We want to keep his law. We want to keep on keeping the law, keeping the word of God in our hearts. It talks a lot about that in the Psalms. And we can thank God for his throne. We can focus on the, on the fact that our God is, is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And that we can focus on, on heaven and on all of the angels that are praising God. That we can universally praise our, our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Verse 20, glorifying God. That's how we started off about praising God and glorifying him in this psalm. And we can join with the heavenly hosts. And we can praise him for his works. We can praise him for everything. So I just hope this little um, message has helped you today. Maybe just read through Psalm 103 and just look at it for yourself. And just ask God to, to speak to you through it and get somebody else to, to, you know, to, to listen to this message if they need encouraging. So just going back to how I started off, the best thing we can do in the morning and in the evening before we go to bed and maybe even in the daytime. And even when we're driving or walking or what, doing housework or doing DIY, or whatever we're doing, we can still praise our God. We can let a song of praise go up. We can just, you know, you are my God and I will give you thanks. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. We can just speak out praise to our God. 
I will exalt you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Lord, and I just thank you that we can come and praise you today, Lord, despite what our situations or circumstances might be. You are worthy of our praise. And we just want to be able to be people that come and bless you and come and give you glory because you are worthy. And I pray for every single person that will be watching this video, that you would encourage them, that you would strengthen them, that you would bless them, that you would help them, help, help them to focus on you afresh today. I pray for all of the nations that are represented, of the, whoever's watching this video, all the families, all the churches, all the ministries. Lord, may your name be glorified. May people see you in us. May we be shining lights. May we be, may we be shining out your love. May we be shining out your thankfulness. May we be shining out for you, Jesus. Lord, we just want to pray now and, and hand over everything to you. I pray for your strength. I pray for your encouragement. I pray for that fresh outpouring of your spirit upon our lives. We need you so much, Lord. We can't do it on our own. So we just come to you and we open up our hearts and lives to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching, folks. It's been wonderful to be on with you and I will come on again um, another time. But just be blessed um, through this message. Be blessed by the word of God. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Thanks for watching.